And we hear a lot too, you know, I think especially my colleagues who maybe are not as technical, um, they get confused with an ETL developer and a data engineer, right? So from your experience, you've been very fortunate based on your experience working those different types of roles as an ETL developer, as an architect, as a data engineer, you've had that um, experience to work those, especially those main two roles. Can you talk about, you know, the differences and, and why people are so think they're the same, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think ETL developer, like the title or the role of ETL developer has been around for a long time. Um, and it has traditionally like, you know, been used for, you know, ETL developer uh, for, uh, a professional like who use like ETL tools to basically create data warehouses or data marts, uh, other like, you know, um, downstream, you know, data stores. So I think currently, right, data engineer, I think is still relatively new, but like very like rapidly evolving uh, in a uh, field or a group of uh, professionals. So I would say currently ETL developer is a like subset of data engineers. So at the core of it, right, um, the main, I guess, uh, component of being a data engineer is to develop ETL, like, data pipelines, right? So that, um, that portion of the, like, job description, I guess, is still the same. But I think data engineer, um, there are additional components that got added as, like, part of the job, I guess, description for data engineers. Uh, and that includes, you know, these days uh, being able to like, develop that infrastructure platform, right? Uh, so especially with the different types of tools and uh, systems that, you know, uh, deal with data these days, right? Um, there are a set of like data engineers that are solely like, you know, developing on like data platforms, like making sure uh, the organizations have um, the tools and infrastructure behind, like being able to process, like store, right? Ingest and basically create the data pipeline needed, right, for that end product. And then there are also um, so some portions of like data engineering, uh, engineers are responsible for like analytics and BI focused these days as well. Um, so yeah, uh, in those cases, like data engineers are working very closely uh, on with the, the end uh, analysts, right, or data scientists, right? Uh, to create either, you know, the BI infrastructure or the actual BI uh, visualizations, as well as maybe like the feature stores um, that are, that the data scientists or machine learning engineers might use. Uh, so yeah, overall, I, I, I would say uh, currently ETL developer is a um, subset of like data engineers, but uh, the just scope of the jobs, right, that the data engineers are responsible for has grown like more than what ETL developers used to do. Yeah, and I would totally agree with you too on that statement, Max. I look at it as the ETL developer is the person building out just the pipes when the data engineer, which is perfect for you, is the, again, with many hats. Right, building out those pipes, understanding the business challenges, putting together the solution, the architectural, the design. So I, I totally agree with you. And I think that is why that data engineer, the data engineer team is so relevant and important for organizations, again, to be data driven because they are the person with many hats. Too bad I don't have as many hats right on now. So. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's awesome. And, you know, you, you talked about the, the, the role of the data engineer and the importance that it brings to an organization. Can you elaborate and talk about some of the challenges that a data engineer is faced? Because as you mentioned, there's a lot of stuff that a data engineering has to do. Building out the pipes, putting together the design and architecture, developing that end product for the customer, understanding data by domain. That's a lot. So what are the biggest challenges a data engineer faces today, whether that be the business, building, speed, or et cetera? Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think the answer to this question like, has been the same for the past, whatever, couple of decades or however long like databases or data systems have been around. I think it's always going to be like data quality and data governance. Uh, it's always going to be like one of the biggest challenges uh, of, of a data engineer. Uh, uh, being a data engineer. Um, so especially like with the amount of data that we have and like 
uh, different types of data, different types of systems that we're bringing data from, right? Uh, data quality and data governance, I think it's going to be even bigger of an issue and uh, of uh, difficulty challenges, right, that data engineers are going to face going forward. Um, and like a lot of times, right, um, like many people expect data engineers like to be able to clean up everything on the back end, right, and provide that like nice, shiny, clean, you know, uh, like all like nice looking data warehouse on the back end. But it's actually a lot more than that, right? Like uh, you need like proper strategy, right? And strategy around like data governance to make sure that is the case. Uh, you wanna have the correct data lineage, right? Being able to track where the sources are coming from, right? And being able to see how the data gets transformed at each stage of the data pipeline. And yeah, I, I think it's like, not a lot of people like get this, but like it's really like, resource intensive and time intensive to clean uh, and have that like data quality practice implemented. Of course, you still might get implemented on the back end. So like in terms of like data governance practices, it's always good to be like proactive, right? Being able to have that kind of like validations, right? Making sure the input data, right? Uh, from the source, right? Is clean to begin with. Sometimes it's not possible based on the system, right? But those kind of like strategies and, you know, um, implementations, right? Working with your uh, other like software teams, right, uh, to implement the, those kind of validations up front. It's always um, like a good practice and it's always going to be a challenge for data engineers, I think. Yeah, I would, again, agree with you. And as I talk to more and more customers, they're bringing that up. Understanding what's available, as you mentioned, lineage, the governance is super important what's out there. Data quality, everybody hates dirty data. We talked about it, I talked about right. it in other videos. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and like and the other. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So I think the other part is like with the data, like governance, right? Just with the amount of like, with the effort of like a lot of organizations to try to like democratize their data, right? Uh, like there are like a lot of like data sources out there. And it's like usually what happens is that like a lot, a lot of times some of the, you know, uh, data marts or data warehouses, tables, views, et cetera, right? It's either like either deprecated, right? It's no longer maintained, and people are still using them, right? And nobody really has an idea of like where they came from, like what the actual business requirements were. So there's like a lot of like kind of like continuation, like propagation of like a bad data, or you know, um, or like of like uh, deprecated, right? Old data, the sale data that goes around um, with the whole like data uh, democratization. So I think it's like very critical that uh, the data governance like practices and strategies are in place. Like, you know, uh, in order for you to be truly like data driven, uh, I think that's key going forward in the future.